So this is your typical vice, and you see these things quite a lot to be fair, you know, two jaws, one fixed, one movable. Uh, it's your average machine vice really. But this one, this is a little bit different, so I'm not really trying to reinvent anything, but it's kind of a bit of a different idea on what already exists. So obviously with this vice you can move all the teeth around forwards and backwards and set them where you need them. Uh, but what makes this one a little bit different is you can actually lock off the teeth and you can move them independently from the other teeth. A bit like this. So say you could have four teeth set, four teeth moving, one tooth set, the other seven moving. Yeah, you know, it makes for some quite interesting setups. And really, the actual reason for me making this isn't for actually any reason at all to be honest with you. I mean, when you look on YouTube, you see people making all different types of vices. Two-piece vices, machine vices, milling vices, watch-making vices, jewellery vices. You know, and I thought I just wanted to add my own sort of um, vice on top of that, really. Something a little bit different, something not, not many people see. And um, this one in particular, I based it off a lathe vice, you know, with a scroll gear in the middle. And luckily for this project in particular, I had just enough steel in just the right sizes, so I knew I wanted it to be quite big. Um, and this piece of steel that you can see me trimming up here is actually 200mm square. So it's just about the same width as the bed, which is a 9 inch width bed. And it's a little bit smaller than that. So these are the three main plates that will make up the body of the vise and uh, I'm just checking to make sure they're definitely flat and they're not too bad to be fair. The only reason I was checking it is just because I know that when I was actually planing them flat uh, the way I clamped them down probably wasn't the best way. Okay so this next piece I'm working on, this round piece of steel that I've got here in the lathe, uh, this is going to be the main centre piece really. Uh, this is going to be the bevel gear, the scroll gear. Now I've never cut a bevel gear, I've never done a scroll gear either but to fair, it came out quite good, on the second attempt anyway. Okay, so that is the back of the bevel gear cut, obviously the face has been cut already uh, and I've made an arbor and just mounted it on the arbor for now. This is the gear cutting arbor that I made a while ago, I never did a video for it, it's just something I had to quickly make. Uh, and as you can see that the arbor itself actually runs quite true but when I put the gear cutters onto it, uh, the gear cutter does not run true at all and no matter what configuration I put it into, the gear cutters just do not run true at all and uh, I suppose that's what you get for buying cheap ones from China really. Okay, so dodgy gear cutters aside, I've finally finished cutting all the teeth into this plate. But you may have noticed a bit of a problem. And that is, when I was cutting the teeth, you may have noticed that it was a little bit sharp and pointy. And that is because I completely made a rookie mistake and cut the wrong amount of teeth. Um, I think when I was setting up the dividing head, I just got the numbers wrong. However, I did decide to cut a bit of a small pinging gear and just test it to see how the gears mesh together and it turns out that they actually mesh together really well however I just wasn't happy with it I just really wasn't happy with it so 
I decided to recut it all together. And you can see here that the gears don't even mesh in the first one, whereas in the second gear, you can see that they actually mesh really well, and that's exactly what we're after. Okay, so for this first plate, I've just cut a hole in the centre, and that hole perfectly fits the scroll gear. Uh, and obviously, when the scroll gears sat in the plate, it will be sat just above the plate, so the actual um, scroll part of the scroll gear will be raised above the surface of the plate, and that's how the teeth will engage with the gear itself. So this part that I'm making now is going to be the actual shaft or the pinion that the bevel gear sits onto, um, and I actually end up changing this part as well later on. Okay, so that is the little pinion that's been heat fitted into the plate, and this is the scroll gear, and they both fit together absolutely lovely. Uh, and when you put a bit of oil on it, it glides like butter on ice. Okay, so now the pinion gear has been cut, I need to work out exactly how high the gear needs to sit to perfectly mesh with the scroll gear. Um, took a little bit of working out, but once all the math has been done, it's essentially just put it in the vise, um, line it up and drill the hole. Okay, so here you can see me using a hand reamer, and I've got it set up on the bridge port, running quite slow and with plenty of lubricant, but fortunately the hole still came out absolutely horrible, and I believe the reason this is, is because the drill bit diameter I used to drill the initial hole was too big, and I was maybe a little bit too aggressive with it, which caused it to sort of wander and score the sides, so when I went through with the hand reamer, it didn't, um, it didn't really do much to be honest with you, but it was still a really nice fit, so that's all that really matters to be honest with you. I know that it would have been nice to have a decent surface finish as well, but... Okay, so already we've pretty much got the whole body of the vice coming together. Uh, we've got the base plate, the centre plate, and then the top plate coming in soon. Um, you know, and it's pretty simple. You turn the pinion gear, it turns the bevel gear, and then obviously on top of the bevel gear you've got the scroll plate. Uh, and the scroll is what's going to engage with the teeth and actually provide the clamping force. So the next thing I need to do is evenly distribute these nice countersink bolts across this whole vise, uh, and this is what's going to pretty much hold this whole thing together.
Okay, so this next little piece that I'm making is going to be what the actual chuck key sits into. Um, one side will be for the chuck key, the other side will slip over the pinging gear, and then obviously we'll transmit the torque. So now this pinging gear is finished, I am going to go ahead and harden it, and I did check it up against the magnet for I dunked it in the soil as well. Now I'm not exactly sure what carbon content this steel is, although I do know it's high tensile steel and it can be hardened. This is also high tensile steel and I've also remade this part, and this is the pinion that the gear actually sits on. Uh, and I've also added an extra piece to the back of the bevel gear, this little spacer. So I'm going to push this onto here, weld around the outsides and turn down the inside so it looks like this. And the reason I've done this is so when it's actually slipped over to the little shaft that it sits onto, it won't want to rock over as much. And that little groove that you can see is for oil. So oil goes into that little groove and it sits in there and stays between the two moving faces. So I'm going to bolt these three plates together using those nice countersunk bolts and then I'm going to clamp it down to the bridge port. And what I need to do is I need to divide this up into eight pieces, eight very precise pieces, because I want it to be an eight jaw vice, so it's going to have to have eight slots in it. Okay, so now I've got the basic pocket cut for four of the teeth. I'm going to go across with a T-slot cutter, and this is exactly four more from the top. Okay, so now I've cut the T-slots, the last tool I'm going to go over with is a dovetail cutter and this is going to cut the final form for the type of dovetails that I've gone with. And the reason that I've gone for these type of dovetails is, it's kind of a little bit hard to explain, but if you could imagine the top plate as a ring cut out of it, so as you get towards the end, there's less and less support. So the idea of the T-slot and dovetail combined is that the actual jaws, when sliding up and down these slots, still have support going all the way up and down the full length of it. So after a lot of milling and a lot of working out, this is what we're left with and I'm very happy with it. It's come out all within spec, everything seems to be decent, nothing's been overcut or nothing wrong. So the next thing that I'm going to work on now is the actual teeth, or teeth slash jaws. So when I say teeth, what I mean is, I mean the actual teeth that are going to engage with the scroll gear. The jaws will come a bit later on, and they will actually slide into the teeth. So the jaws and the teeth will be separate.
So these were the first teeth that I caught and it was just a bit of a rough cut to be honest with you. And as you can see here, the teeth don't actually fit. I got the sizes wrong and if you look at the side of the teeth, it's been very horribly cut. I didn't get the speeds and feeds right at all, but after a little bit of playing around, I come back to it and as you can see here, the speeds and feeds are absolutely perfect and I'm very happy with the finish that I got on this. And uh, obviously with a decent finish and with decent speeds and feeds, the tolerance was much closer to what was programmed. Okay, so I've got all eight of these teeth cut, fresh off the CNC machine, and obviously you can see four of them are small, four of them are large, and the larger ones will be for the corners. And when you lay them all flat, you can see this spiral pattern, and this is the spiral pattern that's going to engage with the scroll gear. This is one of the jaws from the lathe chuck, and you can see that if I hold one of mine up side by side, they look similar. You've got that same sort of tooth geometry, and in fact, I actually based this geometry directly off of the box for the lathe. So as you can see, you've got that tighter curved radius on top and a less curved radius underneath, which makes up two halves of the geometry of the tooth. So after I finished milling these, they came out to exactly 29mm which was perfect and obviously what I need to do next is cut a dovetail up the side so they actually slot into the vise. So I finished cutting the dovetails on these teeth and the next thing I need to do is hog out all the material in the middle and I need to cut another dovetail in the centre of these teeth and this second dovetail is what the actual jaws are going to slide into. So that's about that to be honest with you, that's these teeth all cut and finished, it's basically just a dovetail inside of a dovetail and they did come out looking very fresh, I'm quite happy with these parts. Okay so these next few parts that I'll be making is where kind of things get a little bit different, so these parts are what I call slider rails and these slider rails will slide into the teeth and will allow the jaws to slide over the top of them.
So that's these slider rails complete. Now when I finished making these I feel like I'd cut out a lot of material but rest assured they are still quite very strong and it doesn't really matter about it anyway to be fair because all the forces are going to be applied forwards and backwards not up and down so it's not going to sort of matter in that orientation anyway. Um, these are obviously all eight of the finished slider rails, quite a lot of them. So these little pieces I'm going to be making next are going to be sort of little side clamps and you'll see how these work properly a bit later on but at the minute these little side clamps essentially are going to be forced outwards through the head of a countersunk screw which will clamp onto the sides of the vise. So here in this little demonstration you can see a little bit more clearly what I'm talking about. So obviously we've got a counter sunk screw here uh, and when you tighten the counter sunk screw it pushes these little bits out the side. Now obviously because the tolerances are so tight these only need to be pushed out by half a mil, tenth of a mil if that, uh, to create a really nice tight fixture. So this bar that I'm turning down here will eventually be chopped up into the dovetail clamps. Now this is the same sort of high tensile steel that I was using before to make the pinion gear. Um, but I don't think I'll be hardening these just because I don't want to mar up the steel too much. If anything wears, I want it to be these that wear. Okay, so I've cut even more steel here, and these bars will essentially be turned into the backs of the slider rails. Now, it's probably worth mentioning at this point that the design has changed over five times, way over five times, and, you know, these slider rails, in general, weren't meant to be part of this project, but as I went on, I thought, oh, this will be a good idea, that will be a good idea, and we sort of went down this road of just adding steel on top of steel on top of steel. Uh, but now we are getting round to the point where we're actually starting to fix the teeth onto the vice.
So I've got this nice chunk of 20mm mild steel here and this is what I'm going to cut the actual jaws out of. Um, I'm going to start by cleaning it up, I'll clean it up on all sides and then I'll roughly mark out the teeth, the position and where they want to be. Uh, and then I'll most likely just chop them out of a grinder and clean those up on the mill as well. So this what you're seeing here is just one side of one jaw tooth rail combination and this is all of the rails tooth and slider rails combination which is quite a few parts to be honest with you. So this is going to be the last plate of steel for the vise and it is bigger than the footprint of the vise all the way around so this plate essentially is going to be the clamping plate for the vise this is what is going to be clamped down when you want to clamp the vise to the bed and it's essentially going to put a clamping spot on the whole perimeter of the vise which is going to be quite nice.
So as I was putting this together, I was looking at these little dovetail clamps and I was starting to think to myself, I'm not sure if that's going to be enough. So I took it into the mill and essentially milled another slot for another dovetail clamp. So each tooth has got three dovetail clamps instead of only two, which I think is going to make quite a bit of a difference. Okay, so I think that about wraps up this entire project. Um, not exactly winning any awards for this thing like, um, but it was just something different. That was it really, that was all I was going for. Just something different, something that people don't normally see, uh, and a bit of a take on something that people use all the time in machining. So thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>